Yo, what's up guys, Felix from The Giant Traveler. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you guys why I prefer to live in Colombia versus other countries and cities around the world. So I haven't traveled the entire world, but I have been to, obviously, Colombia. I've been to Belize, Mexico, St. Martin, Spain, and Thailand. And out of those countries, I'm gonna tell you why I prefer to live in Colombia for long-term living opposed to the other places I've been to. Now, that doesn't mean that I'll never move out of Colombia and maybe make my home base another part of the world, but I will say that I don't ever see myself living in the United States again. Yes, I plan to keep my citizenship because my family is there and certain things I do love and miss about the States, but just for the quality of life and what I'm looking for, I don't ever plan to live in the United States again, but I still love the United States for what it offers. Now I have a list beside me and I'm gonna be talking about basically the reasons as to why I prefer and choose Colombia over a variety of different locations. Now because I have this travel channel, I do plan to travel, explore, and see what else is out there. Like I'm saying, I'm not out ruling any location for long-term living. I am out ruling the states, but I do go back from time to time to travel but I will keep my eyes and opinions open if I find something that may be a better suit for long-term living. But the first thing we have is close and same time zone. So when I say close, obviously I'm up in the Northeast where my family lives, around the New Jersey, New York area. You actually can't fly direct from Medellin to New Jersey, but you can go from Bogota to New Jersey. And it's about a four to five to six hour flight. So it's relatively close. Yes, it's still four or five hours. But if you're considering Europe, if you're considering Thailand, those could be, you know, eight to a whole day, eight hours to a whole day of flying. So it's relatively close. I can get to Miami in about two and a half to three hours so, or maybe three and a half hours if it, the, the flights, it, it usually ranges between two and a half or two hours and 45 minutes to about three hours to about three and a half hours from my Medellin to Miami. So it's relatively close. If you're in Cartagena, it might even be you know faster, but it's relatively close to get back to the States. It's also on the same time zone. Now it does flip flop because of daylight savings. So it is at certain points of the year on the same time zone. And then right now we're on central and where my family lives, it's on Eastern time but it's on the same time zone and for me that's super important because i do run businesses yes i run them remote yes i could run them um you know yes i could run them on you know other time zones such as europe and asia and i did and i was able to work over in those time zones when i visited those areas such as spain and thailand but it's quite annoying, especially Thailand, because right now in Thailand, it's like 4.30 or 5.30 or 3.30 p.m. And I'm shooting this video at 4.30 a.m. Don't ask me why I'm up. I'm on a bit of a crazy sleep schedule, and that's that's the reason for that. But being you know, 10, 12 hours ahead, while it's doable, it's quite annoying. So what I have going on is kind of like in the States, but not in the States, but can be done remotely and I wanna be on the same time zone. So if I have people that I need to connect with or reach out to, it's not like I'm up at crazy times to be able to reach out to them because I'm in Thailand where I'm 12 hours ahead or 12 hours behind, whatever you wanna call it, or it's actually 12 hours ahead. So, you know, that's kind of that. Another thing, even with Europe, when I was in Spain, Spain is an absolutely beautiful country, but it's also about, you know, I think it was seven or, either don't quote me on this, I think it was six to eight hours ahead. And while that's doable, it's still quite annoying. And if I want to fly back, it's like a seven or eight hour flight where Medellin to New York or Medellin to Miami could be three to five hours. So it's relatively quick. The next thing is it's relatively cheaper compared to other locations that expats visit. So I just watched a guy, his name is Zoom to Thailand. He just bought a beautiful condo. And eventually, I would like to buy property out here. I'm just not in the financial position to do that. But hopefully with time and growth and more success, I could eventually be able to invest. But he said he spent 270,000 US dollars, which is a boatload of money. Boatload of money. 
and you know I found properties to be way cheaper out here you know depending on what you're looking for you can find a property out in Medellin Colombia for between 50 and 150 thousand US dollars really depends on what you're looking for and what you want but it seems to be relatively cheap compared to other frequently visited expat locations the next thing and it's relatively cheap all across the board right you know my salary in the states you know i'm way i'm probably on the lowest totem pole or the lowest tier but you know taking that over the overseas pretty much anywhere you know if you're a struggling guy in the states and you're barely just getting by you know at least if you take it overseas it can go a little bit farther i'm by no means rich but i can put myself in a little bit my money, my money can get a little bit farther than it would in the states. In the, in the states, it's, you know, it doesn't do anything, and that's the problem with people who live in the states. If you're able to earn dollars and you're able to earn money remotely and work online, I don't see any point in living in the states unless you have extreme tie downs to being in the states. The next thing is depending on where you're located. I'm in Medellin. And I have perfect climate. They call it the city of eternal spring. So it's basically like spring weather all year round. If you go on Google Maps, I mean, if you go on Google Climate or the weather app, it will basically say that it's raining and it has a high humidity percentage. But I promise you, the humidity doesn't feel bad at all. I don't have air conditioning in my apartment because you simply don't need it. All you need is a fan. And, you know, the rainy season isn't right now. It hasn't rained a lot recently. So the weather is relatively good at night. It's like cold, you need a fan during the day. Sometimes it's a little warm, but it's really perfect weather all year round. The next thing that I love about Colombia is really the culture and the people. The culture and the people and how welcoming and nice people are, you simply just don't see that in America. I also didn't see that in Spain. When I was in Spain, I felt like people were extremely rude, especially when I went to restaurants. I just was taken back by how rude people are are it was absolutely a beautiful country but i couldn't believe how rude and unwelcoming people were compared to here where people have you know warmth and welcoming energy in their hearts the next thing is there is a massive expat community so you i because i work online and i know different entrepreneurs and different people who are you know in the kind of space of work that i do i always am able to meet up with people who come out here. I know a lot of people who come out here. I don't. I know there is a big expat community in Thailand and other parts of Europe, but compared to what is out here, because it is so close to the States, it's easier to link up with people from time to time. Now, I don't have a huge social, so, social circle out here. I'm kind of more to myself, but at the same time, I do meet up with different people who I know from business and kind of what I do that frequent out here often because it's a beautiful city, it's a beautiful country, and a lot of people come out here because it's very close to the States. It's not saying like, hey, I wanna to go to Medellin for the weekend or I wanna to go to Colombia for the weekend, which is doable. Going to Thailand for the weekend or some parts of Europe is a bit difficult because when you have to travel for an entire day to get there, that can be a bit rough on a weekend trip. And then the next thing that I think is really important is, you know, Spanish, learning Spanish, the ability to learn a language that is spoken by half the world. I think it's a very valuable skill. I'm not saying nobody speaks Thai. I'm not saying nobody speaks Italian or things like that. But Spanish and English are probably the two most common spoken languages in the world. And being able to learn how to speak Spanish is something that will be able to follow you for the rest of your life. So those are kind of the things that kind of are keeping me in um, Colombia, Medellin specifically. Um, like I said, I don't plan to live in the United States personally anymore. But I will keep my eyes open for future locations in the world because I do plan to travel, explore, and see what's out there. Currently, my home base is going to be in Medellin, Colombia. I've been here for just about a year, and I'm really loving it and enjoying it and building a life out here, which is really exciting. But that's what is keeping me here in Colombia versus other cities, locations, and areas of the world. But I'm excited to check out the world and what it has to offer. And maybe I'll make an update video in the future telling you guys that I'm living in a new part of the world. But there you guys have it. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to put a like on it. I'm coming out with some information very soon talking about how you can build a business with YouTube. 
how you could start working online and how you can do it all remotely. So there you guys have it. If you guys enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, drop some comments down below. Appreciate the support. Let's go for 2,000 subscribers. See you guys later. Peace.